Hello, welcome to the lecture series on machine learning. In this video, I will give an introduction to machine learning. The principal modalities or areas of application in machine learning are pattern recognition, density estimation, regression and reinforcement learning. Pattern recognition, one of the main applications of pattern recognition is classification or sometimes pattern recognition and classifications are used interchangeably. Roughly, classification can be defined as follows. Given a pattern or a set of samples, the problem is how to assign this pattern to a category. There are two approaches in pattern recognition. The first one is supervised learning. The second one is unsupervised learning. The second area is density estimation. It can be roughly defined as follows. Given a set of samples, what is the probability density function of this set? The main application of this field is how do you actually transform a high dimensional data into a low dimensional space for purposes of visualization. The next modality is regression. In this case, in regression, the target or the goal is actually to assign a pattern or a sample to a, a real value or how do you extract a real value given certain pattern. So it is different from the classification problem where the target is to assign a single category that is usually a numerical category. In regression, the output, the required output is a usually a real value, a continuous value. We can have either linear regression or non-linear regression depending upon the input values. For example, if there is a linear relation between the output and the input values, you can actually determine this relation using linear regression. Similarly, in the case of non-linear regression. The problem of reinforcement learning, I mean, it is different from classical supervised and unsupervised learning approach. Here, there is no training data, there is no set of target vectors or there is no set of defined categories. Here the problem is to determine or define uh, both the categories and how the strategies to learn those categories. Here the problem is to define both the categories or define both the goals. Reinforcement learning is a, a popular area in terms of research nowadays. It has two main ideas or it has two main principal ideas that is that of rewards and trial and error. Reward is just a, is like an incentive. For example, when you win a game, you get a reward. The trial and error is related to the concepts of exploration and exploitation. So the principal problem in reinforcement learning is to strike a balance between exploration and exploitation. So a rough definition can be given as follows. How do you determine or define strategies to achieve a set of goals? For example, maximum long-term reward. Here is an illustration of a simple classification problem. We have a bunch of images. Each image has a different way of representing numbers from 0 to 10. So usually the goal in, classification, in a classification problem is to classify these images of numbers into their respective categories. For example, all these images of 2 which look different in each image have to be categorized as the number 2 and similarly for the number 5, 6, 1 and so on. So the challenge is here is that each number can be ex expressed or each number can be each number is available in a slightly different pattern or slightly different way. For example, the 2 here looks slightly different from the 2 in this image and also in this in his handwritten number 2. So the key question is, in this type of classification problem, the key question is what are the invariant features that capture the pattern that we call the number 2 and similarly for other numbers. And here is an illustration of a supervised learning problem. Supervised learning has two main stages. The first one is training phase and the second one is the testing phase. In the training phase you have, for example, uh, in this uh, illustration we have 
uh, different images of two, which are categorized as the number two, and different images which are categorized as number five, and similarly, different images of six. So we are know, we know that these images belong to the category two, and so on. And the problem is to determine the function or the transformation function that relates this input data to this category two. So the challenge or the goal in the testing phase is to categorize images that are not seen in the training data for something like these images into their respective categories. The key, the key concept in supervised learning is generalization. It is the ability of the learning machine to correctly classify the test data or the unseen data or unseen images in this case as the into their corresponding categories. For example, a learning machine is it considered a good learning good learning machine or a, a learning machine is is considered an efficient machine if efficient learning machine a learning machine is considered an efficient learning machine if it has very good generalization ability basically the efficiency of a learning machine is characterized in terms of its generalization ability here is an illustration of unsupervised learning problem for example consider the set of images uh, the problem is these images the the main challenge is there are no there is no target vector that is there is no label for any of these images in other words we do not have any training data so the challenge or the goal is to categorize these images into their respective classes sometimes we may not even know what are the target classes for example an ideal unsupervised algorithm or unsupervised learning machine can actually group these three images into the category motorbikes and these images into the category cars and these images into category truck basically the idea is the images of the bikes may be different from each other but they all have similar features for example they have all have two tires and they all have a handle a front handle and similarly in the cars they all have four wheels and usually have four seat and finally uh, the common theme for all the trucks is they usually do not have any back seat and usually see only front seats so the problem of so unsupervised learning is basically to cluster samples that have similar features into smaller groups or respect to to cluster samples with similar features or some kind of similarity measure into respect to groups or categories here are some illustrations of uh, the density estimation problem a typical approach in density estimation is histogram plotting basically a histogram can be defined as uh, it can be defined as a approximation of the pdf of the given data here i show uh, typical histograms of a one dimensional time series the first one is for uniformly distributed uh, data from the time series plot, we can see that these values are more or less uniformly distributed. But, but the histogram clearly shows that the frequencies are actually more or less same for all the values. Though you can intuitively see the uniform distribution. But the histogram clearly uh, illustrates the distribution or uniform distribution of this time series. Similarly, this plot shows this time series plot shows the Gaussian distributed or normal distributed data. You can see the values are more dense in towards the middle and less dense towards the ends of the values, the minimum and maximum values. So that is exactly what this histogram depicts. Basically, frequency is highest at the mean value, that is two, and um, lowest at the extremes, that is from several standard deviations from the mean. And this plot shows the time series of an exponentially distributed data set, exponentially distributed values. You can clearly see, see that the lower values are actually large in number. That, that is also confirmed by this histogram, which, which looks basically like an exponential distribution. And, and you can also see that uh, as the value increases, the probability or the frequency of those, val of those values occurring in the time series also decreases. So clearly, uh, the probability of a value occurring is our exponential density. And this finally is the uh, time series of a heavy tail distributed data set. So this histogram shows the 
frequency of this heavy tail distributed data. You, you can clearly see that this histogram, um, it has basically uh, properties of the, both the Gaussian distribution and exponential distribution. That's why uh, it has values both uh, less than the mean value or the, ma or the value with the highest frequency and also slightly more values towards the highest value, the maximum value. This is usually known as heavy tail distribution. Next is an example on regression. Here, this plot shows a. Here, this plot shows noisy data, which is basically a sinusoidal signal corrupted by white noise. So, in order to find a good regression fit to this data set, we use least squares polynomial curve fitting. So, this is a blue plot shows a fourth order polynomial that is apparently best fit for the given data. Even though the true signal is a sinusoidal signal, uh, a fourth order polynomial actually is a good fit for this noisy data set. The goodness of this fit actually also depends on the variance of this additive noise. So, this is a small example to show how nonlinear regression works. Next is an example on reinforcement learning. One of the popular applications of, uh, one of the most popular application of uh, reinforcement learning is the concept of autonomous driving vehicles. This is a very important research and also very popular. Uh, for example, DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Agency has funded several challenges and also and, uh, that helped and encouraged many institutions develop these uh, um, autonomous uh, driving vehicles. This, uh, this technology has advanced to a great extent these days. Uh, autonomous driving is very difficult. Mm, for example, it cannot be pre-programmed and you cannot de decide the parameters uh, beforehand. The car the, or the machine or the, in the computer has to make decisions on the go. For example, it has to avoid obstacles on the road. It has to uh, basically turn or slow down when there is a sharp curve like an S curve or a U turn and so on. So, there are many difficult decisions that, that have to be made on the go. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.